Hello everyone and welcome to the Car Code YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Sam. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell so you're notified every single time I upload a new video. Today I am at Volkswagen HQ in Milton Keynes. A huge thanks for them having me along here. I'm going to be doing a review on the third generation Volkswagen Tiguan. This is the Elegance model today in my favourite colour, Nightshade Blue Metallic. So I'm going to be going through all the specifications, the engines, practicality, give it a drive and see what I think. So thanks again to Volkswagen UK and also to Lancaster Volkswagen for lending me their Volkswagen Tiguan R-Line for a couple of hours at the weekend to get those shots as well. With that, let's get straight on with the review. The second generation Tiguan was very angular and not much curve was going on. However, this third generation model harks back to the first generation Tiguan, which had lots of curves all over the body and a few creases as well in classic Volkswagen style. So it has those strong, crisp, clean lines of the second generation Tiguan, so like along here, but it doesn't go all the way down the doors. It doesn't go all the way everywhere it still has a soft element, which I really love. It just has a softer, more friendly approach. So that's something I really love about this new Tiguan is its new friendly face. Volkswagen saying all of its new cars are gonna have a smile to them, which is so refreshing to see when we see a lot of aggressive, angry looking cars, which of course has its place as well. And that's where the Tiguan R-Line comes in. That has a crisscross grille, a more aggressive looking look, still has a Volkswagen smiley face. This Elegance model has this linear and a similar vibe is on the Life and the Match. So slightly different, but really nice. In terms of exterior colors on the Tiguan, as standard, you get this solid Urano gray. I don't like Urano grey, it scratches easily, it's very dull, it's very boring. If you would like solid white, it's £435 for pure white, that's quite nice. Your metallic options start at £730. There is two new shades as well to the Tiguan, and they are Cipressino Green, which is kind of an olivey green, I'm not a massive fan of that. And there's also Persimmon Red. No, it's not Permission Red, it's Persimmon Red, and it literally looks like it says Permission Red. A lot of people are gonna be getting that wrong and it's just gonna be a bit awkward. And I don't like it anyway, it's kind of quite a bright red. I can always vouch for another color. Every time I do a review, there's always a color that I'd love to see on that car. And on this car, I'd love to see the return of Habanero Orange. Cause on the other Tiguan, I hated it when it first came out. And then it just grew on me and grew on me and grew on me. I just think it would look really nice on this car. I think this car works well with deep colors rather than lighter colors. Normally I'd say I'd like a yellow on a car, I'd like a light blue. I don't think either of those are gonna work on this car. However, Habanero Orange, that will look pretty cool on this car, don't you think? This is my favorite by far. It's the nightshade blue metallic. It's stunning. It's sort of a tealy color blue. It's really lovely. I think it looks great and really suits the look of the car. It was available on the previous model as well. 730 pound for your metallic paintworks isn't awful. However, the match trim now, the metallic colors on match are standard. The match trim is insane. The amount of spec, get it while you can because I don't think they'll keep it forever because really they're giving so much things for free. It's really great and it puts it in a similar category value for money for things like the High Indy Tucson, the Kia Sportage, the Ford Cougar. The match is excellent and this really is one of the best mid-size SUVs by far. If you want Oryx White, which is your pearl paintwork, it's stunning. That's £1,220, so it does get quite expensive. To the front of this Elegance, you can see it's got the IQ lighting. Now, all of these Tiguans now have got LED lighting technology. However, this is the IQ lighting. It gives you the full light bar across the front grille, which looks excellent. This is standard from match and above, so definitely go for match. Match is around £200 more expensive than a Life model. However, it adds rear tinted windows, keyless entry and start, electric tailgate, IQ lights with the poor weather condition. In fact, if you spec everything on the life model, it would cost thousands more than the match. So the match specification is definitely my pick of the bunch. This is the elegance and it focuses more on a comfort side of things. It's a very good specification focusing on comfort. The R-Line is focusing on sportiness. Alloy wheels on the Tiguan range from 17 to 20 inch alloy wheels. They start with these 17 inch Barry alloy wheels and they are on the Tiguan specification. That's what they call it. It's just Tiguan and they're just a normal wheel, not the most exciting. They don't look that great. 
When you go to live and match, they go up to these 18 inch Napoli alloy wheels. They're very spoky, they've got a lot of spokes. You can also get the 18 inch Bologna alloy wheels. I don't like those, I think they look quite cheap. They're free option on the live and the match models. Then you can get these 19 inch Catania alloy wheels. I think these are lovely. These are standard on Elegance and they're optional on life and also on the match model. These are really nice and they give you a chunky enough sidewall and look really decent as well. 20 inch alloy wheels are then on the R-Line model. You've got two York alloy wheels. My favorite are the diamond cut York alloy wheels. You can also get them fully in black like on the Tiguan I test drove at Lancaster and you can also get the 20 inch Leeds alloy wheels as well. Loads of wheels to choose from. I'm a bit disappointed that they wouldn't let you spec the York wheels on the Elegance or on the Match. Like you can on the Passat Life, you can put like the sporty wheels on and you can do that with the new Golf as well. But they've not done that with the Tiguan. It's quite strict, the wheels, based on what trim you go for. But these 19 inch Diamond Cut Catania alloy wheels are very nice. They just look really good. And as you can see, they're very flat which will definitely help with this vehicle's aerodynamics. To the back of the car, you've got this lovely light bar at the back, which looks great. You can clearly tell which of its smaller siblings it got this from the Volkswagen Tiggo. The Tiggo was the first car to have the full light bar. I love the Tiggo, and I think this really takes a good inspiration from that car and puts it on the Tiguan in such a good way. As you can see, the rear light bar doesn't quite have the wow factor that it comes with the IQ lights on match trim and above so you just have this reflector kind of bar and then the side lights in led it's still nice but definitely look way better in the iq lights that i saw on the elegance and on the r-line models you've got tiguan spelt across there as you did before and etsi on this one here a nice design to the back of the car your parking sensors are in the black plastic section of the bumper which is great for manufacturing because you don't have to color code all the sensors which of course if you've ever had to get a sensor painted you know is a little bit of a pain this is all thought about which is really clever i'll show you the indicators as well so you can see you've got the sequential indicators with these iq lights matching above again really cool It's got a really lovely mix of curves and straight lines. Let's not forget Volkswagen's two most iconic cars, the Beetle and the Golf. And this has that. This is lovely, the line that comes through here and then out to there. You've got a more rounded face and just a more bubbly personality, which comes from a Beetle, right? So it has a great blend between the two. It has these nice haunches, which are much better now. And then the narrow part of the body. And then again at the front, more of a haunch look. So it looks great. I do really love the way it looks. They've just done a great job. Rear tinted windows are standard from match and above, as is the electric tailgate. And I'll show you all about the boots face now. So let's have a look at the boot and see what that's got to offer. If it wants to do it. The Passat didn't have any problems with the boot. It did it straight away. I don't think the setting for the easy boot opening was on. So let's try it now. Still doesn't want to do it, does it? Doesn't like the easy open boot. The, the Passat had no problems. I don't know if it's just this car, but Anyway, it's not hard, is it, just to press the button. And inside here, the boot has grown, so I'll tell you about that now. On the ETSI model, like this one, the self-charging mild hybrid, you get 652 litres of boot space. That's up from the 615 litres on the outgoing model, and it's in between the outgoing model and the Tiguan Allspace, which was the seven-seater. When it had the rearmost seats down, it had 700 litres of boot space, so it's getting there not quite as big that does feel quite a bit bigger pretty good we will be seeing a volkswagen tayron which will be the seven seater version of the tiguan we might see that in the uk who knows you do have the false floor which is great obviously under here you've got space for spare wheels should you wish to fit one you can't have it on the plug-in model though this has even got the tow bar as well which isn't too much of a crazy expensive option on this car maybe that's why it wouldn't have the foot assist for opening the boot so as with all of the Volkswagen ones, you just have to kick it out for the last bit of the tow bar. And then again, to put it away. Again, then you've just got to kick it till it clunks like that. Practical, you've still got the handles to pull the seats flat. So really good, nice. And it's obviously bigger in space, so you can't complain. Electric tailgate standard from match and above. 
what space like in the back of the Tiguan that's important right because it's a family SUV well it's comfortable you've got your little tags here to do your reclining so that's literally exactly the same as on the previous Tiguan which is great very flexible you've got your rear armrest it's got a trick up its sleeve this you pull it out cup holders pop down you can pop them down and it also angles so you can have your iPad there and it can face towards you so obviously this is going to keep kids happy the cup holders as well if you want to look at the ipad it can be tilted towards that passenger or that one that is so clever and definitely improvement however some people might miss this the tray tables at the back are no longer to be seen so there's no tray tables now at the back which i think it's some families might miss i used to love watching my ipad on the tray table in the all space but obviously that's not very safe. So this is better. It's still got iPad usability, but not really a picnic usability. So some might miss that. You don't actually have a ski hatch either, but you do have the seat folding like so. So just as good, right? If not better. I guess the fixed points are the same, not mega in your face. So yeah, I like it. Obviously rear passengers are gonna be pretty happy in the Tiguan. Loads of leg room, loads of headroom. Let's take the new Tiguan for a drive and see how it is. It takes a bit of getting used to where the on is and where the gear selector is. Nice light steering and the steering weights up really nicely as well when you start driving, which is great. The seatbelt grabbed me then like it would in a Quareg, for example. The nice thing about the ETSI as well is I find it does actually feel a little bit smoother at slower speeds. Whether that's just because it's quieter, I don't know, but it does feel nice. Just nice and smooth, and the DSG is a great gearbox anyway. I've always been a big fan of the Tiguan, and this is now a third generation car, so it's gonna be quite a popular vehicle. There's so many different variants that it can suit a lot of people, really. This is gonna be the most popular engine, definitely the 1.5 ETSI with 148 brake horsepower, 150 PS. The new Tiguan comes with new engines and a normal hybrid for the first time as well as plug-in hybrid. So it starts off with the 1.5 ETSI with 130 PS, 128 brake horsepower. It then goes up to the ETSI, the 1.5 with 148 brake horsepower and that's the car that I test drove. You can get plug-in hybrid models, 204 PS on most models with a front wheel drive, and you can get a higher output as well. So it just depends on your model, etc. Diesel is still available. You can get the two litre TDI, and you can get that as a 150 PS, which is 148 brake horsepower. There's no manual anymore. All models come with a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, which is really smooth and actually works very well with the hybrid system. So that's all really good. So you have the choice of mild hybrid, plug-in hybrid or diesel on the new Tiguan, which is a really great range. Also, the bonnet is on gas strut, which not a lot of cars are anymore. So that's really great. On plug-in hybrid models, you get an official range of 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles, which is a massive improvement. The petrol mild hybrid, this is going to be the most popular. You've got a heads up display. Literally this launch edition R line has got everything on it. But of course it is going to be sufficiently above that 40k tax mark. So you will have to pay the premium car tax. So you just have to be mindful of that when you're specking your Tiguan. You can actually spec an R line for under 40k. So it's possible, which is actually really competitive considering they're all electrified in some way, just even if it is just mild hybrid. It's really good at scanning the road ahead. So I'll give you another view and it can scan. I don't know if you can see my heads up display. It knows that it's a lorry there, which is crazy. And the cruise control will go all the way to a stop on all models now because they're all DSG autos, which is great. Very refined, not getting a lot of road noise, not getting a lot of tire noise, not getting a lot of even noise even when I went higher speeds, I didn't get noise from these massive mirrors, which I thought I might, but they're designed in a way that's more aerodynamic. You can see if you look at them carefully. Some manufacturers, it's like a lot of things are just afterthoughts. They just slap some wing mirrors on. They just slap some door handles on. This has been thought about cleverly, and you can tell that. You've got blind spot monitoring, again, inside the wing mirrors, which is really good as well. It just works better, I think, than having them in the, in the glass of the mirrors. When you put your foot down, 
it does go and it feels more like a two litre really that sense of smoothness and just refinement in how it goes and you don't have to push it hard if you push this thing hard it will fly and honestly you don't need to really push it hard at all i like the little paddles as well they're for your actual gears rather than any regen on this car the paddles don't feel really responsive so it doesn't change as soon as i press it which is a little annoying The lane assist a little bit evasive there, how it was pulling, even though I was indicating I didn't quite like that, to be honest. But yeah, even on these 20 inch alloy wheels, I thought it was gonna be quite firm, but it's really not. I know we're not on really bumpy roads, but I thought it was gonna be a firmer ride, but it's not at all, it's absolutely fine. It does feel quite similar, to be honest, to how the previous Tiguan felt, so it drives nicely. But I actually think a previous Tiguan on 20 inch wheels felt quite a bit more firm so this is nice obviously having big wheels means the big tires and they're not cheap at all it's not grown massively in size by the way the tiguan it's 0.3 centimeters wider and it's three centimeters longer it's slightly lower actually so it hasn't grown massively which is quite refreshing actually because a lot of cars have grown so much we'll test the turning circle actually see what that's like We got the 360 degree cameras, which are really cool actually. So my favorite thing is the two sides feature. So look, we're going for a width restriction now. I hate this bit. We can see on each side, luckily there's no one behind me. You can see the car and you can see, I'm not gonna curb my beautiful 20 inch alloy wheels because the car's so skinny. Ta-da! That is what the best thing is for those 360 degree cameras. It's great for families, this car actually. The Tiguan always has been a family car. You feel secure and, and safe and comfortable. It doesn't feel uncontrollably big. It doesn't feel unruly or anything like that. I find that the Touareg and the CRV actually as well feels a little bit that way, where they feel too big for their own good. But this is nice. You can tell that it's been designed with Europe in mind, which is really important. Sometimes something that manufacturers forget about make cars that are, are silly big. You don't need a big car a lot of the time. I know this is a big car, but in, in the US, this will be counted as a small SUV, which is crazy, but it's true. Go. Just quite easily there, pushed pushed up the gears there. Made a bit of a noise, but it's not like a CVT, which would actually scream at me then. And now just going around town, it's gone up to 40 miles per gallon. I think I could get it to do more than 44 claimed, driving it smoothly in eco mode. Because it's a mild hybrid, it doesn't have regen as much. Driving a lot of hybrids recently, as soon as you come off the accelerator on them, they slow down quite rapidly, and you don't have the same feel with this. You know, both things offer a different vibe but just very smooth. You can't feel it changing between gears. So I like that. A lot of the issues I have with automatics, you can sometimes feel it change and it can feel like it's changing in the wrong place or it's quite clunky, but not at all with this. It's, it's very smooth. The only thing I, like I said, is it was a little bit laggy when I was going between the manual gears on the paddles. And honestly, I am a manual guy. I do like manual gearboxes. So unfortunately the Tiguan doesn't offer a manual transmission anymore. But it's not a huge issue because Volkswagen got three small SUVs that all offer a manual transmission. That's the T-Cross, the Tygo, and also the T-Rock. Someone looked at me there in a Tiguan, but the, the old one. Not old, it's not old, it was a 24 plate, but it's the previous shape. They're looking at it like, what? Have I just bought the wrong car? You might well have done actually, yes. A huge thanks to Lancaster Volkswagen for making this driving segment of the Tiguan review possible. All of their links will be in the description down below. You can find out all about the new Tiguan and you can even take this demonstrator for a test drive and they'll be able to tell you all about the new Tiguan. So thanks again to Lancaster Volkswagen and back to the review. The Ergo Active seats on this Elegance model, they're pretty crazy, honestly. I was trying it out in the Passat. You've got your whole massage selection, which is crazy. You've got waves on your lumbar. You've got tapping lumbar, stretching, crazy. Even your passenger's got a massage function. They think about everything, don't they? Even your passenger. And of course, they've got height adjustment. Some cars don't have that. This 15-inch display is 
obviously it's excessive. The 12 inch is fine. This is like having a massive iPad and honestly, I think they're trying to wow us. So this is the interior of the life. You can see it's got cloth and part leather. On the normal Tiguan, just the Tiguan trim, which is the base model, it's all fabric so you don't get this part leather section. This has got the 12.9 inch center infotainment screen, which works a lot better. It's not much higher than the actual dash and I really like how that looks. It's actually standard on all cars, even on the R line. It's the infotainment package plus, which is 1100 pound that gives you that 15 inch screen. So that's really good. It doesn't just automatically come on higher models. You do have to opt for it because this 12.9 inch screen is perfect. A bigger screen would just be a bit much. So this is perfect for the car and I think it suits it a lot better. It doesn't look overbearing. It looks really neat actually. And I really like how it looks. Less is more in this case, it looks really great. One thing I love, it's a small thing, but I really like it, is the A pillars are now wrapped in fabric, not just plastic. So they're a lot better now. And it just blends really lovely into the headlining. It's a small thing, but I do really appreciate that. It's the same as on my Golf, and then they stopped it. Talking about fabrics available on the new Tiguan, the base model has full fabric seats. On Life and Match, you've got part leather, part fabric, which is sat in the showroom, which was lovely. You can opt for leather, but it's around £2,000, so it's not cheap at all. And on the R-Line, you get the R-Line cloth and part leather and part Art Velours, so a really nice mixture there. My favourite is the Art Velours cloth that you get on the Elegance model. I saw the black one in Milton Keynes. These have got the Art Velours seats in Elegance, which is so comfortable, and a light headlining, which I really like. This one is actually over £40,000, so I've managed to specify my dream tick one for under £40,000, so I put it on so you can see that. I do really love this Mistral light grey cloth that looks great. I'm not sure about this gear selector actually. I think I just prefer it being down here. Even having the little button one like the Golf Scott, that would be absolutely fine because you've got the engine start button down here and then this here, it could have been all more a bit more simple if you just had it all in the same place. It does free up a bit of space and it means you've got this new multifunctional button which you can change between drive modes, volume, and you can kind of configure that to how you want, which is cool and it is good. And again, it does solve a lot of problems because people didn't like the lack of control. So they're bringing those back in, which is definitely really good. You've got dual wireless charging, which is great in this little box. The dash is pretty crazy. It reminds me of like Rolls Royce or something. It says Tiguan. It's very like the Touareg in here. Really nice. I've decided I'm going to be a little bit brave or stupid and try the park assist feature. So. Let's try that. So searching for parking spaces. So press the brake fully and press start. Okay, let's do that. Press start. Oh, please continue driving forwards. Now we'll stop. Press start. Please release the brake again. Vehicle parking, steering intervention active. It's gonna have to come forwards a bit actually. But this is a tight space, so obviously it's helpful. But honestly, sometimes I think it's easier just to park the car yourself, to be honest. Whoa. Oh, it's moving itself forward as well. Vehicle is now parked. How crazy is that? Like, it is a bit weird and in an automatic, you don't even have to do anything. It didn't even have to shift gears. It went into reverse for me. That is crazy. I literally didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to brake. Did it all for me. Um, so if you're not good at parking, this is a handy thing. Unfortunately, I said this about the Passat, the parking brake doesn't come on when you put it in park. If you turn the engine off though, it does come on. And then when you start, press the start button until you hear it ding, like so, and then just use your gear selector. So not as hard as I was making out to be. You don't have to press this, then lift that up, then turn that off. All you have to do when you come to a stop is just turn it off and it puts the handbrake on for you and puts it in park all by itself. I really love the lever wrap steering wheel and the fact that you've got the physical buttons. Obviously everyone's gone on about it, but it is great. Get on the steering wheel. I'd prefer a perforated leather wheel to this one, which looks like synthetic on this elegance. So I do like the R-Line steering wheel a lot more. The digital dash is great. It feels like we're getting that Volkswagen quality. We're kind of missing almost before, missing an element of the quality that we used to get. There's loads of options as well that you can get. You can get Harman Kardon surround sound system. You can get a sunroof. I would like a sunroof in this R-Line model. It's a little bit dingy. So a sunroof is a nice thing. Good thing about Volkswagen is you kind of always opt for what you want. 
so it doesn't matter what trim you're on they, they'll put options on they're always quite reasonable i find with their options they don't charge thousands for packs and things like that they just include lots of things on each trim and then if you want to add things you can do that as well So then, what do I think about the new generation Volkswagen Tiguan? Well, it's a great car. It was always going to be a great car, as the previous generations were excellent in their own right. This just brings in technology, electrification with them being hybrid and standard. You can also get diesel if that's what you want. They are all automatic and I quite like a manual. However, the manual is only available on the base model on the previous one. So we kind of knew that was on its way out. And if you do want a manual transmission, you've got three smaller Volkswagen SUVs to choose from, so it's not a huge issue. It's a great family car. In the midsize family SUV segment, it's very competitive, so Volkswagen has done a great job making this Tiguan as up-to-date as possible and ready to fight the tough competition. It's definitely streets ahead of many of the rivals, and I really love this vehicle. I love how it looks, technology is great, and it's nice to drive as well. Thanks again to Volkswagen UK for having me at this drive day and to Lancaster Volkswagen for letting me borrow their Tiguan R-Line. I'll put all their links in the description down below. If you enjoyed, subscribe, and I hope to see you in my next review.